This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So yes, I have been living in the Netherlands for longer than two years now, and I still have very vivid moments when I'm cycling along, whether that's to go to work or the train station or whatever it is, I'm out of my back. And I have these like, I can't believe I'm cycling on a bike in the Netherlands because this is where I live. It's so weird. And there are so many culture differences still that I find every single day when I'm talking to Dutch people, when I'm talking to other expats, when I'm talking to my family back at home and I have to say something on the phone and they're like, what, the Netherlands? This is another list of all of those things that I still find sometimes very confusing sometimes completely strange, but nonetheless, very, very Dutch. So here it is. This first one is different if you don't live in a city. I have only lived in cities while I've been here in the Netherlands. I first lived in Amsterdam and now we live in Den Haag. We did stay for a little time in Huizen because that's where my partner's parents live. So there was a very small interval where we lived in a village. In the cities in the Netherlands, there are no bin days. Now, if you watch a lot of these sorts of videos, you will know that Not Just Bikes also made a video about the Netherlands not having any bin days. And I will link his video that's had over a million views down below. However, I found this also really strange. My family would ask me, or like, how does the rubbish service work in the Netherlands and how do the big trucks move around all of these small streets. They don't have to go to every house because there's a collection point that you take your rubbish to. And this makes so much sense to me. I love that this is a feature of Dutch cities. It is so incredibly efficient. And being able to take your rubbish whenever it's full to a collection point, they're usually very, very close to your house. They have them located all over the city. So it's easy, it's fast, it's quick, it's efficient. I don't have to think about it once it's out of my house. So this is my number one kind of semi weird thing because Australian cities very much still do have rubbish collection days. My number two thing is that the Netherlands, and again, I don't know if this is just a city thing or this is also prevalent in Dutch villages. I can't really seem to find a dedicated post office. My mum recently sent a package to me and it got lost. She sent it to another number, a combination of my numbers, but it wasn't this house. And she said, just go to the post office and see if it's been dropped off there. And I said, mum, we don't really have post offices and she said well then where does your post go so in the Netherlands post offices are like collection points so they also double as just a normal store they're usually a news agents or they can be like little deli places sometimes they sell food they're like these random places that you go to either collect your post or you drop posts off but it's not a dedicated post office. At least I've never come across any. If this is a thing in Dutch cities and it's different in villages, let me know in the comments below. But as far as I can tell, there's no Dutch post offices. One thing I had to get used to when working and living here in the Netherlands was that everything comes in monthly cycles. Now, this might not be only Dutch specific. I think there are quite a few countries that run on a monthly cycle. So you pay your bills monthly, you get paid monthly, insurance is monthly, rent is monthly. All of these things come in monthly lots. In Australia, most places actually pay weekly. And when you're looking for rental houses and things like that, the cost is per week usually. So even if you were to pay monthly, if you had organized that with your realtor, you would still be comparing height houses and comparing prices based on a weekly rate because that's how much people get paid. So you can quickly calculate how much of my pay is going directly to rent. Here you get a big lump sum and then it feels like you have a lot of money and then all of your bills come out all at the same time and then there's not that much left over. So 
getting used to everything coming in at the same time and being on this monthly cycle was a little bit of an adjustment, but I kind of prefer it. It makes so much more sense to me now. And when I calculate things or when I'm talking about money back in Australia, I have to remember that when people say, how much do you pay for rent? in The Hague, I have to tell my Australian friends what it would work out to be at a weekly rate so that they can mentally process it. Now this next one hasn't thankfully happened to me yet, but in the Netherlands you can be invited to a wedding for separate parts of the wedding. So say you're invited to a wedding, it will specify on your invitation if you're invited to all the separate parts of the wedding or if you're only invited to say the ceremony in the church, you're not invited to dinner and then you can come back and party later. So essentially you have to go somewhere, eat somewhere else and then come back to celebrate. Now I feel like this seems really classical Dutch because it is obviously done in a way to save money. But in my head, why would I invite someone to watch me get married that I wouldn't even like pay for their meal? Like why are they even invited in the first place? Just have a small wedding. You don't have to invite lots of people and then invite half of them from a meal and then invite the other half back again to have a big party. Just either have a small wedding or invite everyone to have a meal. It just like seems really strange that you would separate it out and have different guest lists for the different parts of your wedding. I can't, I find it actually a bit rude if I'm honest and I could never imagine doing it myself. And again, thankfully it's not happened to me yet, but I don't know. I don't know if I would even really feel like participating at all. It kind of feels like maybe you are an afterthought that you're not, you're like a half guest. Yeah. I don't know if this is changing with the times or if it's becoming more prevalent. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever been invited to a wedding and then told to go and eat elsewhere and then come back later? How do you guys feel about this? Whether you're an expat, whether you're, the, you're a Dutch native, is this normal? Do lots of people do this? Being on the subject of celebrations, this one is more to do with birthdays. So birthdays in the Netherlands, I always feel like everyone's very um, present focused. So you are the host and you throw a party, which means you supply food and drinks, but then everyone's kind of obliged to bring a present. Like you, I feel stressed. I don't think this is in Australian culture. You just go along for a drink and it's the present is your presence you are coming to help them celebrate, but that I don't think you're obliged to bring a gift unless it's a really, really good friend. I have received gifts from people that have been completely unexpected. And I think it's just in Dutch culture, it's someone's birthday, you give them a present. And this just does not correlate with my brain sometimes and I am very notorious for forgetting a gift but at the same time I think you know it's do we really still have to be buying presents for 30 year olds like what, I feel like gifts for birthdays is something you do for children because it's fun and it's nice but like we're all adults now so it seems unnecessary. Now being the birthday person, it's your responsibility to bring the cake. So I feel like bringing the cake gets you presents if that's how this exchange is meant to be working. But I feel like in Australian culture, it's my birthday. I want other people to organize the cake. I know my partner has fond memories of being at primary school and bringing snacks and things on his birthday and having to outdo other kids with better snacks and things like that. So it's very much in the culture that you, Proctier, is that how you say Like it's your shout, you shout everyone snacks and cake because it's your birthday. So that is something that I'm not really used to. And I guess we're gonna have to do it when our daughter starts going to school. So organizing snacks and things for a birthday. But yes, that is another strange thing about Dutch culture that I tend to forget all the time. Before we get on to the rest of the list, I want to give a shout out to Skillshare who has sponsored this video today. 
Skillshare is an online learning platform for creatives and people who are keen to learn. I love this platform and I use it constantly to upskill, whether that's in work, whether that's in my creative life. So I've used it to learn how to edit films better, learn how to use the Adobe suite, so Photoshop and Illustrator better. I've also used it to help my writing skills for work. So the ways that I have found that Skillshare has integrated into my life and made me better at the things that I want to be good at has been fantastic. One class that I've been enjoying this month is Productivity Today by Kevin Siska. I feel like between work and outside of work, juggling a whole bunch of tasks can get pretty crazy at times, whether that's at work, in your personal life, and how these two come together. I know that upskilling in productivity and project management and managing my time has helped me a million times over. And that's exactly what I love about this class. Skillshare, the platform itself is specifically made for learning. There are no ads interrupting. There are only high quality and premium classes that are updated constantly. So if you are also interested in Skillshare, the first 1000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a whole month free trial for Skillshare. And you guys can start exploring your creativity today. Now let's jump into the rest of this list. So this next point is when you're looking for work in the Netherlands. In Australia, you have casual, part-time and full-time. So casual is like the equivalent of a zero hour contract here in the Netherlands. And then part-time is part-time and full-time is full-time. In the Netherlands, they work on temporary contracts and permanent contracts. I am yet to be offered a job that is a straight up permanent contract. Here in the Netherlands, a worker, just as a renter, has a lot of legal rights. So once you're signed on with a permanent contract, it is really, really hard to fire you or get rid of you. So there is a culture here that has developed, whether that's just over the years and mistrust or people abusing that system, where no one offers you a permanent contract. This affects your ability to apply for a hypothèque, uh, a mortgage. So you're not able to rent as much. It affects all of these financial things that you had no idea it would affect. And I think since COVID happening, maybe there's less trust in the permanent and temporary contract system. But I find this really, really strange that you almost have less legs to stand on if you don't have a permanent contract at work. Also in the working theme, my friends and family are always incredibly surprised when they realize that all of your work leave, so your holidays and vacation is in your contract for the year time. You don't need to build this time up like you do in Australia. So in Australia, to be able to take holidays, you have to have worked X amount of time to have actually built up that extra time. So in the Netherlands, your maternity leave is the same. You are entitled to take your maternity leave literally from day one if you needed to. In Australia, again, you need to work for a company for at least 12 months before this maternity leave kicks in. Sick time is the same. You don't need to build up your sick time here in the Netherlands. You just get given time off if you're sick and there isn't a limit to this. I think in Australia, on average, you get about 10 sick days a year. I was incredibly sick with my pregnancy and I needed obviously more than 10 days. I was completely bedridden and was unable to move. The fact that I didn't have to build up this sick time meant that I was able to stay. I was able to go to the all of my hospital visits. I was being monitored by a nurse at home. So just the healthcare system and knowing that I was financially supported while I was sick was amazing. If that situation had happened in Australia, I would have lost my job and had to have gone straight onto benefits and struggled to pay rent and buy food. So the fact that all of these things are tied up in your job straight away is a massive, massive bonus. 
And I love that I'm in this system. I'm so used to the idea now that thinking back to how Australia works out at sick leave and holiday pay and all of that stuff just seems so backwards and so crazy that yes, very glad that this is a plus point for the Netherlands. The other thing that we have here in the Netherlands that isn't in Australia is compulsory health insurance. So everyone has to pay health insurance. If you're a student or if you're on benefits, you also get a subsidy from the government, but you still have to put that money towards your health insurance. It is compulsory. There is no negotiations. You can obviously offer to have higher cover, but base rate cover is about 120-ish euros a month. And that just is goes without saying. That's what you have to pay. There's also an excess on top of that. So I think it's up to like 368 euros is excess. What am I saying? I just made that number up. In Australia, there is no compulsory private health insurance. You have public health and private health. Public health basically covers everyone and that comes from taxes and Medicare and things like that. And private health is what you would opt to pay on top of that. When I was living in Australia, I never really truly saw the benefits in paying for private health, but seeing that my money actually goes to something and every time that I go to the doctor, it is free, most medications are covered. And especially after what had happened with the pregnancy, that how well I was looked after and how little out of pocket I had to pay because I was already paying health insurance was incredible. So I highly, highly regard the Dutch healthcare system. I love it. I feel like looking back on this list, they all seem to be things that the Netherlands actually does better than Australia, except for that weird, always having to bring a present thing. I don't, I don't know if I'm about that just yet, but these are some of the things that I still find I'm getting used to or still coming up against and thinking, yeah, that's not how we do things in Australia. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Bye.